Here I am to worship. Hi, I was on mute. Thank you for joining us for worship here at People of Hope. Uh, please join singing our opening song, Here I Am to Worship. Sorry, we're having some technical problems with our opening song uh, with the audio. So we're going to sing it together. So just a cappella. So I invite you to join me in singing on the screen. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you, hope of a life spent with you. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, all together wonderful to me. King of all days, oh so highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created, all for love's sake became poor. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. And I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross, and I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon the cross. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. And here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. So again, welcome to worship here at People of Hope. Hopefully that will be our last technical snafu of the morning. Uh, all, hopefully all our music will play, all that kind of stuff. And it doesn't, you know, if it doesn't, you know what? God is present here and alive and among us anyway. So thank you for joining us for worship this morning. Everything that you need for church, it will appear magically on your screen as we uh, continue through our service this morning. Uh, just a reminder, we make Holy Communion part of our Sunday morning worship services here at People of Hope the vast majority of the time. Uh, we are going to have communion this morning, so if you need to grab some communion elements so you can partake in the meal, uh, please do so at your convenience. Uh, so again, thank you for joining us for worship. Please join me in our call to worship. I knew joy, but when I heard the laugh of my child, 
Suddenly, joy was overflowing. I knew love, but when you held my hand, suddenly love was overflowing. I knew God, but when you showed me grace, when you forgave me, when you loved me, when you raised me, suddenly God was overflowing. So let us worship holy God together as a reminder that God is here and we are never alone. This is community. This is the body of Christ. Welcome home. We continue uh, with lighting our Advent candles. I dream of music that makes my heart swell. I dream of trees that take my breath away. I dream of sunrises that wrap me in light. I dream of family dinners that feel like home. I dream of church services that give me hope. I dream of love as the default. So today, as we draw near to Christmas Day, we light the candle of love. May this light burn bright as a reminder that God is here and that God is love. We are not alone. Thanks be to God for a love like that. Amen. Please join in singing our candle lighting song, Those Who Dream. Sorry, we had just a little bit more of a difficult uh, transition to our music, so now please join in singing the song, Those Who Dream. There's so much sorrow here, so much shame and hurt and fear. Oh. 
it's time to live fierce dreams like Mary did brave dreams like Joseph did new dreams like Jesus did cause those who dream change everything those who dream change everything So as we continue, uh, before we continue with our prayer of confession, I need to say that I like watching Christmas movies. Some of my favorite are like Elf and This is a Wonderful Life, but one of my favorite ones of all time is the movie Gremlins, uh, which is a Christmas movie. And oddly enough, we are being plagued by gremlins here this morning at People of Hope. So I think we've eradicated them all. We're not gonna feed our, um, we're not gonna feed Gizmo after midnight ever again. But from this point forward, everything should work okay. So I invite you to please join in seeing, uh, join with me in our confessional prayer. The words will appear on the screen. Let us pray together. God of good news, you say to me, you are highly favored, but I struggle to see how that could be. You say to me, do not be afraid, but I am afraid all the time. You say to me, even the impossible is possible, just look at Elizabeth. But all hope slips through my hands like water, the impossible still feels impossible. So today I pray, today we pray, teach us to sing like Mary, teach us to laugh like Elizabeth, teach us to trust like the angels. Before we continue, we are going to take a moment of silent confession. Let us continue. Forgive us when we can only do one at a time or none at all. Amen. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by Christ's authority and Christ's authority alone, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first reading today is from the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 7, verses 1 through 11, and then verse 16. Now, when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all of his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved am about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from, the flowing, from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you, and I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more, and evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house, 
Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. Our second reading is from the Gospel of Luke, the first chapter, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom, and of his kingdom, there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. We continue with our Christmas craft time with Pastor Dan. So as you are getting your, um, as we leave this slide up, as you're getting your things uh, ready to go, I want you to notice the picture of the craft that we've done so far. Um, Pastor Dan made a mistake and inserted it sideways. So if you're a young member missionary, what I invite you to do is to lay on the floor so you can see the image correctly, so you can see what we've made so far. And what you'll see is that you, we've made an angel, and we've made a manger, and we've made Mary and Joseph. All right? So this week, as we continue with our Christmas craft, I need you to find the bag that says week number four. Okay? And in that bag, you're going to see a whole bunch of pipe cleaners, a little wooden person, and two strips of, strips of felt. So this is probably the most complicated of all the craft weeks. Whoops, don't drop your glue gun on the floor like I just did. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with the little wooden figure, okay? You're going to take the smaller piece of felt, and you're going to glue this around the body of your little wooden figure. We're going to give him some clothes, all right? Him or her some clothes. Um, so just take your glue. Blue, 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 blue. I'm going to miss the glue gun, I think. It's one of my favorite tools now, I think. So you'll put, wrap, Wrap your, your lady or your man in some cloth, and you see it looks like that. Then you're going to take the bigger piece of cloth, and you're going to glue, make a glue strip across the top of the head and one on the back. We're going to give this little character a headdress. Or as I said to Karen as we were practicing this morning, a cape. But it's really a headdress. You see? Just like that. I'll bring it closer so you can see what I made. I'm going to bring some pipe cleaners along with me. So this is what we made this time. It should look kind of like this, probably a little nicer looking than this. This is a shepherd. Today we're making a shepherd and we're making some animals. All right? And as we do this, we're remembering all the different people who need to hear the message of God's love for them. So after you make your shepherd, you're going to take two pipe cleaners, okay? The first pipe cleaner you have, you're going to make a circle in the middle of it. 
just like that, and you're going to give it a twist. Now you can make your circle pretty big, or you can make it small, it's up to you. So you'll twist it, and then you'll take the two ends of the pipe cleaner and make them into kind of a straight line, and then you're going to bend the ends down like this. Okay? Then you're going to take your second pipe cleaner and you're going to wrap it around the straight parts of the thing that you just made. Just like this. And you're going to wrap it around a lot of times. You're essentially adding more body to what we're making now. Maybe one more time for that guy. And you're going to want to do that for both ends of the pipe cleaner. And then you are going to put those down like this. And all of a sudden, you've made a sheep. This is what our sheep look like. My sheep is kind of funny. It's got a big head. But then you can take your sheep and you can put it right down by your shepherd. Now, these sheep have been eating growth hormones, as you can see, because they're a lot bigger than the shepherd, but that's okay. We're not going to eat them, so those growth hormones aren't going to go into our body. So, um, today, as we make our sheep and shepherd, we're going to remember that the message of God's love was first proclaimed to those who are on the outside of expectation, those who um, need to hear this message, but those whom we kind of disregard in our society. So I'm going to ask you to say a prayer with me. So let us pray. Dear God, thank you for this day. And thank you for your message of love. We ask you to use us to proclaim this message to those in the world that need to hear it the most. The outcasts, the misfits, the lonely, and the lost. Dear God, thank you for your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to continue uh, by sharing the peace. So, God makes peace within us. Let us claim it. God makes peace between us. Let us share it. The peace of God is here to stay. Thanks be to God. I invite you to share a sign of God's love and peace with one another in the chat box here on Facebook Live. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Thank you for coming to worship this morning, this fourth Sunday of Advent, this blessed day where we hear the encounter of, G of God's messenger Gabriel uh, with Mary. You know, I've been thinking about a lot of things lately. I think that's what being kind of in this time of isolation is. I've been thinking about people in my life who have encouraged me to do uh, different things, um, uh, things that I never felt equipped for, things that I never felt like I was good enough for, uh, things that were challenging for me. And this past um, week, I started thinking about my college French horn professor. His name is Dave Roman. Uh, he still teaches, and uh, uh, Dr. Vroman was one of these guys who had a really dry sense of humor, uh, who held you accountable to do your things, but did so in a kind and loving way. And I remember showing up on to my university, uh, Bradley University's campus, in the fall of my freshman year, uh, 
lug in a French horn and determined that I was going to be the best French horn player on the face of the earth. And I remember one day in particular, I walked into uh, Dr. Broman's uh, office. This had been after some months of, of playing the French horn. And he looked at me and he said, Dan, I think that maybe you're supposed to be doing something different than playing the French horn. And a whole bunch of things started firing through my head. Was I going to lose my scholarship? Was I going to, you know, what was I going to do? Was he kicking me out of the music program? And he went on to say that, um, that maybe the French horn wasn't the instrument that I was supposed to be playing. Maybe I should concentrate on voice and maybe switch to a different instrument to play in the band. Uh, You see, at the time I had really crooked teeth and uh, it was really hard for me to, to play the French horn and put my mouth in the, in the correct position. And I looked at Dr. Broman and I said, I, you're asking me to do something that I've, I've not really thought about doing. Like, how am I supposed to do this? And he's like, Dan, Dan, trust me. Playing the French horn isn't what you're supposed to be doing. Instead, you should be thinking about teaching people uh, vocally and playing this different instrument in the band, and everything's going to be fine. And I know it's going to be challenging for you, Dan, but know that I'm not giving up on you, that I've got your back, I've got you covered, and I'll help you through these difficulties. Well, I changed to a, a voice major to teach choir, switched to tuba, played tuba in the band, and had a lot of success. Now, I was thinking about Dr. Roman a lot uh, this past week as I was preparing this sermon, uh, simply to say that that interaction that I had with Dr. Roman was very similar to the interaction that Gabriel has with Mary this week, which is also very similar to the call stories of the prophets of the Old Testament. Now, these stories unfold in kind of a four-step process. First, God visits someone and, and tells tells this person that they are supposed to do this thing that they have never imagined, right? Like today, Gabriel shows up as God's messengers and, 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 is, and is with Mary and, and, and gives this long, eloquent speech about how Mary is going to be the mother of the Savior of the world. Now, I wonder how many times God has approached us and said, you know, I have big plans for you. I think that you're the right person to do this or that or proclaim my love in this way or that way in the world. And I know that you haven't imagined that you're ever going to be, you were ever going to be that person, but you need to trust me, you're that person, right? Now this narrative is very similar again to those Old Testament prophets where God comes down and visits these prophets and gives them this prophecy that they're, they're supposed to fulfill. So that's step one. God calls someone to do something. Step two is when we get in the way of that calling. When we essentially refudiate, that's a big fancy word, uh, the call that God has given to us. In today's story, um, Mary refudiates or argues with the angel Gabriel. She does so very passively saying, well, how's this going to happen? How am I going to give birth to the Savior of the world? I'm a virgin, right? Now, that's Mary's interaction with God, but I wonder how many times in our life when God has called us to do something, we say, oh, hold on for a second there, God. I don't agree with you. How am I ever going to possibly do this or that? I know, God, and I trust you, God, that you don't make mistakes, but I think this might be that one exception to the rule, right? Like, you're mistaken. It's not me. I'm not worthy of doing this. I'm not equipped to do this. I can't do this, God. And again, the prophets from the Old Testament fall into this trap all the time, where God calls them and they argue with God, saying, hmm, Not me, God. Not me. So step one, God calls. Step two, we fight back against that call. Step three is that God repudiates our repudiation of the call. 
God comes back and says, no, I haven't made a mistake. You are the person. You are the person that I've identified to do this great thing. In our Bible lesson from today, you see that after Mary talks back to Gabriel and says, how am I supposed to do this? Like, I can't do this. Gabriel goes on to explain how this is going to transpire, how this action is going to take place in the world. And I wonder all the time if God does the same thing with us, right? God calls us to do something. We say, God, I'm not the right person, but God kind of ignores that and comes back to us and says, oh yes, you are the right person. And maybe God does this through the people that God puts in our lives to encourage us to pursue this holy calling that God has given us, maybe to, to serve other people or proclaim the gospel or, or, or just do the work that we're, we're, we're called to do. God essentially says to us, I, uh, I know that you have worries, but I know what I'm doing. I got you. I got your back. You're exactly the right person. And again, this happens in the Old Testament prophecies as well, right? Where God sends this prophecy to the the prophet. The prophet says, I'm not the person to deliver the prophecy. And God comes back and says, oh yes, you are the person. Don't worry. You're, you're You're the guy. You're the lady. You got this. So that's step three. God's refudiation of our refudiation, right? So we have this calling, us saying no, God saying, oh yes. And then comes the key fourth part. The fourth part that I live every day according to. And the fourth part is this. God promises as we live out these callings that we don't feel equipped to do, but God knows that we're equipped to do. God promises that we're not alone when we do that. You see that in the text that Gabriel gives to Mary today. There's a promise that this is all going to transpire and that God's going to be there. And Gabriel says the important words that nothing is impossible with God. And I think about this all the time as, as I engage in ministry here at People of Hope and as we engage in ministry together and how God calls us to do these big things and how easy it can be sometimes for us to put up roadblocks to all these things and God says, no, this is the thing that you're going to do. And by the way, you can do these things because you're not doing them by yourself. I'm always with you. Nothing is impossible when I'm with you says the creator of the universe. And this is what happens in the Old Testament as well. When God commands a prophet to go out and gives this prophecy and the prophet says no, and God says, oh yes, you're going to go. And by the way, I'm going to go with you. So you're going to be okay. It's going to work out. So this might all be nice to hear, but what's the point? On this fourth Sunday of Advent, when we hear this, miraculous story of of Mary and this interaction with the angel. The point is this. God calls us to do amazing things in the world, things that we might not feel like we can do, but God identifies us and says you can do them and reminds us constantly that as we engage in this holy work that we don't engage in it by ourselves. We're not alone in the work. And let's face it, during this time of isolation and pandemic, where we long to have interaction with other human beings, where we long to see smiling faces and engage in the work that God calls us to do, maybe the sweetest words that we can hear our God tell us is that we are not alone. So siblings in Christ, as we continue or end our worship here on this fourth Sunday of Advent, let us remember that we're not alone, that God is always here with us, that God uh, travels on this journey of life with us, even in the midst of God calling us to do things that we need to do in the world. 
And let us remember that not only is God with us, but we are gathered together to do things, to support one another and encourage one another. So remember that you are not alone, that God loves you and that God's love goes with you. And for that, I am thankful. So thanks be to God. Amen. Please join in singing Mary's song, the Magnificat, from Hold an Evening Prayer. So, Gizmo the gremlin, or uh, Gizmo was hungry again, the gremlins have showed back up. So you're just going to have to trust me and follow along as we continue with our time of worship. Uh, we're going to affirm our common faith with a uh, statement of affirmation. So I invite you to close your eyes, let the words wash over you as we affirm our faith together. We believe that this world is hard, harder than it has to be. When the world falls apart around us, we believe in listening for the angels that say, do not be afraid, and in seeking out the Elizabeths in our lives. Those who laugh with joy at our arrival and throw open the doors to their homes, we believe that healthy relationships can offer healing through the laughter of cousins, the joy shared between siblings, and the home found in partnership. Therefore, we believe in church families, in chosen families, and in the love that extends beyond family. We believe in friendships, in neighbors, and in leaning on each other when the going gets tough. We believe in the triune God, lover, beloved, and love itself. Inherently relational, always connected, and never alone. We believe that the same belovedness exists for us. We believe that we are loved and claimed, never alone. Thanks be to God for a love like that. We continue with our time of offering. And um, during this time of offering, I just want to say thank you for your continued support uh, for the ministry and mission of People of Hope and for the countless ways that you continue to answer God's call, even when you might not feel equipped to do so, to proclaim God's love here in this place, in our community, and in the world. And you're, that proclamation of God's love manifests itself in tons of different ways all the time. Um, one way is through our tiny food pantry. 
um, which gets consistent use. Another way is the, the gifts that you provided for the women's shelter as well as uh, the LINK program this past week. You are a generous people. And I thank you for how, how generous you are in sharing God's love with the world. Uh, if you do choose to give financially to People of Hope, there are some, some instructions at the top of this live feed about how to do that. Uh, and I encourage you to, to do so uh, if you feel compelled. So we're going to continue with the prayers of the people. We're going to put the prayer slide up on the screen as we go along. Um, uh, I invite you to put your prayer requests in the chat box if you haven't thus far. Um, we are um, going to conclude every uh, prayer request with the words, Lord, in your mercy, and I invite you to respond, hear our prayer. Uh, you can also respond by hitting one of the emojis that appears on the bottom or as part of the Facebook stream. So let us pray together. Most holy and gracious God, I thank you for this day of grace. I thank you for all the ways that you continue to show up and use us and call us to be your love manifested in this world. And gracious God, I ask that you continue to strengthen us and encourage us to answer the callings that you give to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Uh, gracious God, we give you thanks for, for, for um, people who answer the call to bring, provide relief and to provide things to people who are in need. Today we offer a prayer of gratitude for the member, member Mishni family who donated a crib and dresser to the LINK program. As we've heard back from the coordinator, that, that those items were greatly needed. And we thank you for all people who donated items to both the Women's Shelter and LINK. Thank you uh, for allowing us to be a blessing during this Christmas season. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious God, I ask that you continue to calm anxious hearts, hearts that are filled with anxiety because they can't be with loved ones, um, hearts that are filled with anxiety because this Christmas will look different than before, hearts filled with anxiety that technical problems continue to arise and arise. God, allow us to, to dwell in peace and calmness and remind us to give all our concerns over to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious God, we thank you for this church family, for the member missionaries of People of Hope, and all the good we do together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious God, um, we pray for Denise's family, uh, as her son and, and his family uh, are no longer suffering from the effects of COVID. Thanks be to God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious God, today we pray special prayers for Becky and her family as they face difficult health decisions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious God, we ask um, safe travels for all those who are traveling during this holiday season, for, for Marilyn as she travels to Arizona uh, to be with her daughter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Peace and prayers for all during this time. May the love of the season fill us. Thanks be to God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for the soul of our country, that in the season of hope we might find compassion over fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious God, we lift our silent prayers to you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We're going to keep this prayer slide up on the screen just for one more moment.
We continue with our communion liturgy. I know that you won't be able to say your parts. Oh, we're good. So your parts will appear on the screen as we go along. So people of God, people of life, we gather as a holy communion for a meal that has been shared countless times in countless places and in countless ways. The first time this meal was shared, Jesus was gathered around a table with a ragged collection of people, outcasts, betrayers, the power hungry, the fragile, the lonely, the lost. The first time the meal was celebrated, Jesus promised that was for all time, that whenever the bread was broken and the wine was poured, wherever the story was told around a table, he would be there. Today, we remember the story as it's been told a thousand times over. We eat the bread and we drink the wine and we affirm that we all belong at this table and that Jesus is here. So, if we come to this table angry, let this bread and wine be our peace. If we come to this table betrayed, let this wet bread and wine be our grace. If we come to the table divided, let this bread and wine be our wholeness. If we come to the table in despair, let this bread and wine be our life. For this is a holy table with food to fill the hungry world and wine to quench thirsty hearts. Thanks be to God. When Jesus ate with friends, he took bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Each time you do this, remember me. Then he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he passed it to his friends, saying, Drink, this cup poured out for you and for all people is the promise of God. Whenever you drink it, remember me. We remember Jesus' death and resurrection, our hope and our life. We break the bread and share the one cup. Thanks be to God. I invite you to please pray the Lord's Prayer with me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Everything has been pre prepared. The meal is ready. I will invite you to partake in communion in your homes. Uh, if you're by yourself and you want to call a member missionary friend to participate in the meal with you, uh, please do so at this time. So please receive communion.
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace and in his peace. Amen. We need a little extra time there. We're, gonna, we're making shifts on the fly, so it's, it's kind of an exciting time. Uh, but we're trusting that God is with us. A uh, great example and embodiment of today's Bible lesson. Uh, just a smattering of announcements today, so bear with me a little bit. Uh, first, tonight at 7 p.m., I invite you and encourage you to join us for our longest night service. It's also known as Blue Christmas. That's going to be a time of, of reflection, praying for all the things that we've lost and, and celebrated during the course of the year. Uh, we're leading that service from our home. Uh, there are some items that you're going to need if you're going to participate in that service, so I invite you to grab uh, your Advent kit candles or four candles, um, some paper that are, is cut into some strips, and a writing utensil. So again, that's tonight at 7 p.m. Uh, our midweek services conclude this Wednesday at 6.30 p.m., so I invite you to, to tune into Facebook and YouTube uh, at 6.30 on, those, on Wednesday evening to, to participate in worship. Then we're offering our Christmas Eve services three times, both on face to, Facebook and YouTube, on Wednesday. So those times are at 4 p.m., 9 p.m., and 11 p.m. So um, enjoy, enjoy that worship service, participate in worship, and know that it's not the ideal. We'd all rather be uh, together face-to-face, -face, but unfortunately we can't. So um, know that we're together in heart, mind, and spirit as we gather for worship on Christmas Eve. Uh, the Sunday after Christmas, we are going to be having worship here on Facebook Live at 9 a.m. It's called uh, a Christmas time experiment. It's going to be an interactive service. There's not a sermon, but I'll be leading that worship service anyway. Uh, you're going to need some supplies to participate in that as well. Those supplies are listed in this past e news. Uh, this past week's e news will also be in this week's e news. Very simple things like post it notes and a candle and a pen, things like that, and a Bible. So uh, make sure you have gathered those supplies. Join us for that worship. It should be a lot of fun. Uh, the church office is going to be closed December 24th through uh, until January 4th. Um, my family is actually heading to, to central Illinois. My in-laws have been in, in isolation for a couple weeks. We have been doing our best as well, so we're going to get together with them. Uh, so that's where we'll be. If you have a pastoral emergency, simply call the church number. All those calls are forwarded to my cell phone, and I'll put you in touch with a local clergy person who might be able to address the need that you have that can't be addressed over the phone. So again, December 24th through Janu until January 4th, the church office will be closed. Our Epiphany Star service is happening at, live on Facebook at 9 a.m., on January 3rd. Um, that's where we celebrate with our Star Words for the upcoming year. Uh, those Star Words were included in those Advent at Home kits. If you didn't pick up your Advent at Home kit, no worries. Uh, there'll be instructions that morning about how you can receive your Star Word as part of the worship service. So uh, that, those instructions also, I think, are in this week's e-news as well. So don't worry about it. We, we got you covered. Um, but come join us and be a part of that service. Uh, my last announcement has nothing to do with worship. Instead, it, uh, we got some exciting news this week. Um, as many of you know, we've been, we've, uh, been kind of journeying down a path uh, with a local developer to create an affordable housing um, uh, complex here on our People of Hope campus um, or, or encouraging them to do so. Uh, and what we've been waiting for for the past six months was news from the state of Minnesota whether that uh, particular project was going to receive tax credits to truly make an affordable housing situation and to, to enable us to proceed. We got good news this past Thursday that our project, which is known as uh, Manor Hills, I believe, um, was approved by the state of, Moni uh, state of Minnesota to receive some of these tax credits. Now, what does that really mean? Well, it means that we've crossed another step in, in sort of making this dream a reality. That's really all the information I have. Um, I have been in touch with, with our local developer about what our next steps are. Uh, we're gonna revisit those after the first of the year, uh, but it's an exciting, exciting step for, for, our pro for this project and for our congregation. So something to be celebrated during this holiday season. 
Uh, that's all the announcements I have. So the big pivot is that I'm going to sing our last song for you as kind of a solo piece and know that I haven't practiced it. So it's going to be fun, but it's a totally appropriate song for this Sunday. Uh, it's called The Canticle of the Turning. So if you remember any of it from church services, please sing along. But I'm going to teach you the refrain really quickly uh, so you can at least sing that part. And the rain, refrain goes, My heart shall sing of the day you bring. Let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears for the dawn draws near and the world is about to turn. So we're going to sing that one more time, okay? My, my heart shall sing of the day you bring. Let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears for the dawn draws near and the world is about to turn. So I'll yell refrain and that's when you sing that part, okay? Here I go. My soul cries out with a joyful shout that the God of my heart is great. And my spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who wait. You fixed your sight on your servant's plight and your weakness you did not spurn. So from east to west shall my name be blessed could the world be about to turn? Refrain! My heart shall sing of the day you bring. Let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears for the dawn draws near and the world is about to turn. Though I am small, my God, my all, you work great things in me. And your mercy will last from the depths of the past to the end of the age to be. Your very name puts the proud to shame and those who would you yearn. You will show your might, put the strong to flight, for the world is about to turn, turn, uh, sorry. Turn, refrain, my heart shall sing of the day you bring. Let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears for the dawn draws near and the world is about to turn. From the halls of power to the fortress tower, not a stone will be left on stone. Let the king beware, for your justice tears every tyrant from his throne. The hungry poor shall weep no more, for the food they can never earn. There are tables spread, every mouth be fed, for the world is about to turn. Refrain, my heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears for the dawn draws near and the world is about to turn. Though nations rage from age to age, we remember who holds us fast. God's mercy must deliver us from the conquerors crushing grass. This saving word that our forebears heard is the promise which holds us bound. Till the spear and rod can be crushed by God who is turning the world around. Refrain, my heart shall sing of the day you bring. Let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears for the dawn draws near and the world is about to to sing that again. My heart shall sing of the day you bring and the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears for the dawn draws near and the world is about to turn. Thank you for being so patient as we punted here at the end of worship today. May God bless you and keep you May God's face shine upon you and be graceful to you. May, law, may God look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer. 
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God, we will. We'll see you soon.